Hello everybody. What you're looking at here is a PF906 uh, treadmill DC motor control board and I would like to use the motor to to drive a lathe or something similar so I've been working on how to ap apply this board for other functions and uh, to facilitate that I've removed the, the big chip which is normally over here and I'm going to drive it with an Arduino. So to give you some idea of how this board functions we have input AC terminals on the left and through the uh, a relay, through the bridge rectifier, through a pair of smoothing capacitors, through a pair of load sensing resistors onto the motor terminals. Not forgetting of course that we have the two IGBTs that are switching with the voltage to, pro to produce speed control and they are driven by the totem pole driver and PMW. No, PWM. Anyway, so the PWN comes in on this Q3 base, uh, transistor base, and there's a control voltage on the Q6 which drives the, which turns the totem pole on or off. This relay can be turned on remotely by via this FR7 optocoupler and when you turn the voltage on or when you turn the relay on then the voltage is applied to the motor control circuit normally it's delayed so that it allows the the uh, switch mode power supply to start up the pick to get ready and all those kind of things and only then does it turn on the PMW PWM the, the most of these boards seem to be very similar. This one's made by Leo. There are other boards that I've noticed that all have a switch mode power supply. They all have a smoothing capacitor. They all have this cutting relay. They all have a rectifier. They all have either one or two uh, IGBTs and a load sensing resistor. So they're all very much the same. So hopefully this will give you a good idea of how to modify other ones if you didn't choose to do that. Just carrying on about the the board and what's on the board. This component uh, selection over here is to do with a raise and lower motor. It's also directly connected to the AC inputs. Haven't really looked at that. Not really interested in that. Those terminals, or at least that those the raise and lower motor has limit switches, and they come in via these three switches, which directly go onto this J4 socket pins as well, off to the control board which I haven't looked at in great detail either. So this power supply, the switch mode power supply, is directly connected to the AC mains, has its own bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, switch mode power supply controller and transformer. The transformer has two outputs. One set comes through these diodes here and the other set through these two wires here, I think onto this diode. This this supply on on that side is uh, has an output of about 12 to 13 volts odd, maybe 14, and it provides that via these two pins. So that's VCC and zero, and uh, it provides those two to the control board. So that's accessible as a second uh, 13 14 volt supply if you need it for something else. The, this output drives through these smoothing capacitors, drives the two linear regulators, which are hidden down here in the dark, and they, via the smoothing capacitors, provide minus 5, 5, and they have a common ground. This ground, note this, this ground and that ground is not the same. They are not coupled, so that floats relative to this. Talking of um, reference grounds, this ground is connected to this motor plus terminal. So motor positive is actually at zero volts. Then motor negative terminal is at minus 300 and something volts relative to ground. And the five volt is then above ground by five volts, of course. So you can drive an Arduino using ground at five volts and directly input signals onto this board. The easy way to do it is to have the PMW output of the PIC drive the base of Q3 directly 
and an IEO logic um, to drive Q6 when you want to turn the outputs on. I want to use the Arduino to drive RF7 as well and um, the intent is then to use that to turn on the relay and the relay then powers up the supply and only after a couple of seconds then I can turn on the motor. That provides a bit of boot up time for all of the electronics and it provides safety switches around here as well. This is a TL082 op, op amp. This op amp has two, two sets of inputs. It's a dual op amp, so it measures motor current via these two resistors uh, and those few components, and then it ends up on this side of the board, or at least of the pick chip. And this um, motor minus voltage is read through this resistor and a few other components around here and it's also output to the to the pick chip. Those two outputs are in are respectively MV and IV. This HV input here is the DC 340 odd volts uh, that that's directly after the smoothing capacitors. So I guess you could check with the with your Arduino to see that HV appears and then you turn on the relay no, wait, that wouldn't work. You turn on the relay, then you wait for HV to appear. If it appears, then all is good. Then you can start PMW, and then and then you should measure, then you should monitor these two to determine if there's an issue with your with the load on the motor or not. So just looking at the uh, the sockets, this is the the old RPM sensor that was on the main motor. I'm not using that, so I haven't really paid much attention to that. This, these two terminals are the outputs from this optocoupler, and the, the optocoupler is driven by the pick chip to output signals back to the control board. Not sure what I'm going to do with that if I do anything with it at all. J3 and J4 are really of, of interest. I have worked out the pinouts and what have you on these, and um, I'll publish them separately under a uh, as a schematic of the electronics of this board. And of course FH7 is in here somewhere uh, as one of the terminals for that to drive that relay. Um, what else do I need to say? Okay, just looking at this at this uh, switch mode power supply, it's driven by a TOP244YN switch mode power supply controller. It um, has a diode D4, which I think is just a straightforward diode, nothing particularly fancy about it. And it has the voltage sense from a TL431IC down here, which senses that output voltage. And it then has feedback, optical opto feedback through this uh, optocoupler. These optocouplers are not of not much interest to me because they're inputs to the pick and I'm not probably not going to connect them to anything. So just looking at the LEDs, when there's a pick here, the LED could drive the, at least the pick could drive the the one side of the LED down to ground. The other side is positively connected. So when it's on ground, it will light. So I suppose that will indicate if you connect the, your Arduino to it, it'll indicate that the the Arduino is alive. I suppose you could also use pin 13 on the Arduino for exactly the same purpose. So LED2 over here is associated with those two. When you drive the inputs to these two optocouplers, then LED2 will light. LED3 similarly is for these two optocouplers. When you drive either one of those two, then that LED will light. When you drive the relay, LED4 will light, and LED5 will light if you drive, if the pick has an output and it drives an output to the control board, which again I haven't really been interested in, so I've not looked at that. Right, I I have connected the motor to these terminals, and the first time I did it I had some wiring wrong and what have you, and it zoomed up to maximum speed and it jumped off the table and bent some stuff and broke some stuff, so that wasn't so great. But anyway, this terminal got bent. R61 got broken and R20 something other 21 got broken. Uh, 
So I've taken them off the board. So my Arduino at the moment connects directly onto the trans onto the, the base of those two transistors. I'm intending to reinstall that resistor and then wire it up directly onto the um, the big connectors connections. Maybe that's going to be a bit small, but we'll see. Anyway, otherwise the, the these two resistors are 4K7 resistors, and they're just in line with the base, uh, presumably as protection for the PIC or for the Arduino. And this R61 drives or is a is takes the input high uh, when the when it's uh, when the Arduino goes three state. I'm not sure that the Arduino likes that in particular. So. I don't know what was wrong with it, but it didn't seem to be very happy when it was connected to the when that was connected. So taking it up wasn't a big deal for me. I think I'll leave it at that. I've talked about most of the things that are of interest on this board. There are a few components that I haven't figured out. There's a there's a strange circuit trace over here. Perhaps that's to get consistent length of circuit trace. I'm not sure why that's there, and I don't know where it goes. Because these are in the way and they I didn't feel like taking them off. It has a snubber network here with R9 and C6, and it has this diode as the freewheeling diode to protect the motor and to protect the circuitry when the, the power is off to the motor. Uh, then it has a number of filters and what have you capacitors up this end. It's not they, they should be fine. There's no no issues with those. Incidentally, this board did come up with an error when I first um, hooked it up, so uh, to the treadmill that is, and um, I've not had any troubles with it since. But what I have done is underneath this relay connected a uh, bridge to its outputs or its terminals. So this relay at the moment doesn't work, but I want to eventually make it work. So I think that the whole thing stopped working because this relay decided to stop working. Its contacts must have burnt or something. So I need to look into that and maybe replace that. Or well, otherwise I'll just leave it wired across with a, um, a bit of thin wire and then that'll be that. Okay, so for all it's worth, just a bit more information on Arduino that I've been using so far. This is a standard Pro Mini. At the moment there it's still connected to the programmer. I haven't finished the programming side of things yet. And the program at the moment outputs on pin 10 here, it outputs a PWM signal through a 4K7 resistor because I am connecting directly on this signal directly onto the base of the Q3 transistor on the totem pole driver. This pin is via a 4K7 resistor onto pin 13 of this Pro Mini and um, it drives the, the voltage on the motor to turn the totem pole driver on and off to drive the motor voltage. This is the continuously alterable speed control to adjust the PMW output for the for the motor. And these two is just a 5 volt input from the motor supply or the 0 and the 5 volt supply that went, that I indicated previously on them on the control board. There we go. This is the KiCad schematic that I have produced for the PF906 motherboard. It has or details the part of the switch mode power supply, the 5 volt signals, the uh, over voltage and over current and HV monitoring system, the totem pole drivers and IGBTs, the current sense resistors, the motor terminals and uh, um, the various I.O. and also the LEDs that are connected to them. I suppose I shouldn't call them I.O., that's the optocouplers. So in just a little bit more detail, I haven't drawn all of it, but this is the, the these are the pair of outputs for the switch mode power supply. This is the second output from the, from the switch mode power supply. It's a separate ground. The first supply drives the 5 volts through the linear regulators, producing plus and minus 5 volts, which is the supply source for the TL082 chip, which is used for monitoring the motor current and the motor voltage, and also the HV voltage is directly connected to the, presumably an analog input, I suppose, on the PIC. 
Um, the totem pole driver is shown here. It's a pretty simple circuit. It simply drives the two parallel IGBTs. And this, these two transistors perform the totem pole on-off function. And this Q3 performs the Arduino PWM input function. So just going back to this bit here, this is the, the various uh, FR optocouplers. FR1 and 2 have LED3 associated and they're just inputs to the PIC chip. LED2 is uh, associated with FR3 and 4 and it drives the uh, two pins on the PIC chip as well. FR5 is the, the opto feedback for the, the switch mode power supply controller. And FR6 is the feedback from the PIC chip back to the, the um, treadmill controller board, probably not of much use. It has LED1. And LED4, of course, is associated with driving the uh, FR7 and the relay. So just going back up to this relay, As you can see, it's in the DC circuit, so that every time you turn it turns on, it would see the full inrush current of these two capacitors, which is probably significant, and I'm not surprised that these contacts burn after a while. So it probably isn't rated, uh, or it isn't the best quality in the whole scheme of things, who knows. Hmm, might be better ways of connecting it as well that, to prevent that. Anyway, so that's the schematic that I have so far. Just a bit of information about the transistors and the optocouplers and the IGBTs and a photograph of the um, controller board and just for what it's worth the motor that comes with this thing is a 2.5 horsepower DC motor, 180 volt rated 4700 RPM and clockwise rotation and it's a fairly decent hefty thing so when it jumped off the table and fell on the floor it wasn't all that much fun so just for information, this is how I connected my Arduino uh, to this uh, totem pole. That's R21, connected it to R21, which feeds into the base of Q6. And that's the power output control, I suppose. There's the damage I was talking about, and the chip is missing. And Q3, uh, onto the base of the Q Q3, only because it was a convenient spot to go along and solder it onto. This stuff that's all over the circuit board that's like a a glue or a conformal coating or something along those lines. Not really sure what it is. It melts under higher temperatures, you know, like a soldering iron or something like that, but it's all over the place and it's a bit messy. Might be to provide a seal for the components. It's not a bad thing in the whole scheme of things. So that's the HV connection point, the minus 5. That's the plus 5 where I connected the Arduino positive supply, and of course the ground supply. This is the motor voltage terminal. IV is the current motor terminal, as far as I'm aware. That's R61, which I've now taken, or since this picture was taken, taken off the board. It's a 10K resistor. This is a plus 5 volt. Uh, pad, I suppose, and um, so it was pulling the the signal high. Power's been connected. It's driving through this um, lamp arrangement. So I'll just step back a little bit and power's on. That was the capacitors charging. There's the signal to say that it's um, on, but it's not actually the, um, there. Now we've got 10 seconds have passed and it's on. The lamp is on. That's the, that's my BMW output control. And you can see that by adjusting it, I can, but I'm also drawing more, less and more current, depending on how I adjust the BMW. So, I can confirm it works.